Well, hello there, everyone. Wait, no, no. That's not going to do. Never mind. All right. Uh, anyway, for today's video, we'll talk about MSU. And we're going to try and build an Um. And at the end of the video, you may or may not. Some of these can you may go. I can't follow. Yes. Uh, I'm going to try and take a look at uh, Rebel MSU because my five changes have done a lot. Um, step. Get out of here. Go on, cat. Get out. Uh, but uh, the change to the evade is huge. The removal of some of the automatic accuracy. Um, like on it, don't automatically kill smalls the way they do, uh, particularly at extreme range. I uh, stay locked. Evades and harder and harder. Second, and if they're going second, how are those smalls being caught? So. And bigger ships have more trouble killing them at one go. So we're going to try and take a look um, at what you should do with an MSU. Now, I'm going to start somewhere strange. And I'm going to start with the squad ball. <sighs> While the evade changes are affecting squadrons, they're not affecting squadrons as much. Um, so we're going to take a look at some potential squad balls here. Um, like if you're going with a hammerhead only or a slow enough MSU, like some kind of firing line, then it's just Biggs, Jan, some X-Wings or some yt 24s or YT-1300s. Um, just keep your stuff alive, spend your... Spend your uh, points like this. They're still ball bombers. They'll hold up at 77 points. Um, the problem is these will not cover CR90s doing crazy maneuvers. Now, you can go with the minimum, which is Tycho and Shara. Uh, two scatter A-wings. Sometimes they are going to rock the opponent's world, and sometimes they are going to get eaten in three, four shots, and the enemy is just going to roll over. Um, so then we're kind of looking at, well, what else can we do? Um, and it really depends. Are we taking some squad pushing? If so, how many? Um, I think Lando is crucial. He's just the best pointed. He's double double brace seven hull for twenty three points, which is kind of bananas. The anti squadron dice is great. The anti ship dice is okay, um, but the abilities on them are ridiculous. Um, Forcing a reroll if they just get one hit with a brace is great, but the the fact so many people are taking asteroid tactics, you can put asteroid tactics in yourself. Uh, the discarding brace to do two damage is just fantastic, and it can't be scattered and it can't be evaded. Um, because they modify the dice. Um, so he does quite a bit of damage to flotillas and small ships. Um, and so his dual role, if the enemy has fighters, he will take a lot of killing and he will do a lot of damage. The other one who, the other person who kind of excels at this is Dash. He'll do a lot of damage. He's rogue and you don't have to support him as much. So maybe we just take two rogues and then some stuff that we can push with a token or something like that. So 
Dutch is that great is the greatest dual role squadron at his points price. Bar none. Six hit points, okay, he's heavy, great. But if he hits a squadron, it's locked down. If it's already locked down, it's taking extra damage. And if they've got no squads, he's 16 points for a black dice bomber who is not being flacked out of it. And then probably want either Tycho or Shara to taste. You know? This is 79 points of squad ball. Now, it'll tie stuff up relatively well for a short time, buy you time to flack stuff, or it will go hunting ships easily enough. And a squad token or two can help get Dutch in place, particularly if you're hunting larges. You don't need to worry too much. So, like, let's say that's our squad ball for now which I know is an odd place to start with MSU, but this is its own kind of unit for hunting opposing smalls, hunting flotillas, or getting, piling in the damage. And we really need to start with the CR90A with the Janus Light. I think that is the core, the starting block. If it's not the core, it's the starting block of any MSU. Now, there have been some changes. So, with small surviving, there's a possibility, a possibility you actually want a defensive retrofit. Um, and we're looking at reinforced blast doors, ECMs, potentially, because evades are so good, right? Um, reactive gunnery, Probably not, uh, unless you're doing something crazy like we were doing last week. I'm not going to, though. I think the problem with adding more defensive tech is you're making the thing more expensive. And then the turbo laser slots. So, realistically, the toss-up here is between linked turbo laser towers and turbo laser reroute circuits. The only reason, well, okay, so turbo laser reroute circuits are just guaranteed damage. The problem is, how is your fly in? Because they're using a defensive retrofit, or sorry, they're using up a defensive token, and they don't work too well on a double arc. Whereas, like turbo laser turrets, you're not using other resources. Uh, because you uh, can flack without obstruction, if squad's getting close, they can't hide from that super flack. And if you get a double arc, if you're getting the guaranteed hit out of the... Not getting guaranteed hit, but it can work out the same as turbo laser reroute circuits. I'm going to put in TRCs for now because that would be our standard JNL's light. Now, this can be, this is kind of your, you know, it's just so good and so reliable. You want to land on asteroids or debris, collect victory tokens. Here's your CR90A. Um, you want to hide and shoot out of it. You know, it'll get around the back of anything you want it to, It'll stay out of a firing arc relatively easily. Um, you know, it's just a fantastic little ship at its points cost. We won't add another one for the moment, but we'll take a look at the other options. So we've got our CR90B. So what I always love to do is put Dudana's Pride on and then remove it <laughs> later in the list building. It just, the thing with the CR90B is you add to Donna's Pride, that is now more expensive than a CR90A. Um, without necessarily pushing up reliability. Could take something like SW7s, which just means the damage, it'll do five damage um, once it gets in there in double arc. 
attacks, and it'll always do that 5 damage. Liberator might be an idea. Tantive, Tantive 4 on a, on a CR90B. The CR90B is probably running ahead and probably needs to do its own commands, but Liberator is a possibility, particularly with Intensify Firepower. The engine techs, I'm not convinced that they're as good anymore without the without the double ram. Um, and then could reinforce blasters because the one thing going at speed four, you can ram someone quite easily. Got a maneuver chart do it. I'm just going to take one thing for one second. I feel there's a cat who's in trouble in the background. And we're back. But yeah, like medical team, it's me. The one thing we can do is throw Ezra Bridger. Just throwing those obstacles out of our way and into the way of somebody else. Yeah, so, uh, there's a lot of messing around you can do. The other one is the MSI, two things, the ion cannon batteries, now that tokens are so important, or the MSI ion cannons. Now if you want to go really expensive heavy ion placements, but I don't feel they're good in an MSU because you're pushing up the price too much. Yeah, you have options, you have options. I feel like leading shots is obviously not the way to go unless you are doing the Pride, but then you're putting like a 50 odd point, 52 odd points on a CR90B, which is not the true value of the CR90B. Okay, we're going to put SW7 ion, put those on it for the moment. We're going to come back. We're just going through all the potential options. Now, flotillas. Uh, okay. Want to push a bomber ball? There is no better option, basically. You know, uh, they will do all the work. Uh, your torn fires, your soak canals, things like that. Just to push and push your squadrons. Uh, now they can hand out support, missions resupply, and parts resupply, and slicer tools can all be wonderful for an MSU. Um, I'm going to try it without it for this though. Without that definitely. And the hammer ends. So, if you're doing a gun line MSU, or you want at least partially a gun line, hammer heads, uh, scouts are really. Like, they don't seem like they'd be any more survival than CR90s. Their token suite is worse. Their maneuverability chart is worse. They're not as fast. Generally, they're not trying to do what a CR90 trying to do. Um, they're trying to move in and just <coughs> excuse me, concentrate fire every turn. Uh, they're slightly cheaper than a CR90A so when you're messing with them you just want to want to keep them that way. Now you've got girls on her but the other thing you've got the task forces. Task Force Antilles, again, makes that slightly as survivable as CR-98. Um, I would say slightly a bit more because it means like squadrons have to kind of split their attacks and it gets all kind of wacky. Um, and Task Force Organa is just that little bit of dice fixing um, that you want. Now, you can also, gunnery teams is the one thing. They're the only kind of cheap source of gunnery team. Sadly, look for it. It's no use. But, gunners is probably over. So the weapons teams are over. Gunnery. Turbo. Um, one thing is if you take a bunch of them, can do boarding group and they can make somebody have a bad day. Boarding engineers flip 
some crits, maybe. Uh, the other dual options. Like, I don't think Shriv is really all that good. Because he can't get rid of officers. Uh, can't get rid of admirals. Just feels underpowered. Um, Jin is always kind of niche. I've never really found a use. Uh, Cham is brilliant. But Cham is five points. So... If you're doing it on a hammerhead, I don't think you're putting him on a scout. The honest answer. Uh, reserve hangar deck could be good if you're doing a bunch of CRNCs. Decaps is useful if we're doing a saddle fleet. Proximity mines, eh. And everything else is just kind of... Unless you fear demo, at which point you take three with tractor beams and you just go demo never go away with you um but yeah you the other slot really that you could look at is turbo lasers um if you're doing a slow firing line quad battery turbo turrets is probably your best bet you could go link turbo laser turrets but then you're looking at 49 points for two red dice. We're rolling it a lot, admittedly. But I think you're still off at that point. Looking at another CR9B potentially. Um so let's try some white battery turrets for maybe three. We're, we're leaving a lot of stuff in here right now. Come back to it. Hammerhead. Now here Cham might be worth it. Cham might be worth it. Uh, the external racks increase has kind of hit these guys a little bit. Because now they're 40 points, which is one less than a CR90B. Something, or, sorry, that's uh, more than a CR90B. What am I talking about? And I don't think they're, they're going to have a longer time getting there. So I think the external racks is, I think the one point increase is a bit tough. The one thing they do, is they can take ordnance experts and can take the external racks. I wouldn't try expanded launchers, assault proton torpedoes or assault concussion missiles. Like, unless you're doing something Sato-ish. Um... Again, the titles work fine. Task Force Organa, you've got one of each dice. I think just do a Geralt's Honor and something like a Cham. There you've got 45 points of niceness. Um, again, this is this is a bit more meandering. Uh, this EMC 30s, if you're going Scout Frigate, I think you're kind of, to my mind, you're almost out of MSU. Because, like, if you look at it, you've got to have the ordnance experts or another gunnery team. I've seen somebody use sensor teams and they gasp with it. So, um, ordnance experts is the cheapest gunnery team. And with that amount of black dice, you want to be using team slot. Call them gunnery teams. The, the gunnery team slot. It's just force of habit. But um, other than that, external racks really seems to be the only one. Uh, our APTs are assault concussion missiles. I don't know why. I thought I was suddenly back in um, hammerhead mode. So you do APTs, you're at 77 points already. And then you probably want a title because they're fantastic. And let's say we go with the Juice One, you're at 83 points. And that's that's a lot. So probably if you want somebody to go in 
probably looking MC30. Now I'm leaning more towards the external racks in an MSU type of build, simply because do the more do the most damage. Um, because the with the ACMs and APTs only proccing once, round just want to pile on the damage, and those upgrades can sometimes be counterintuitive because you end up spending them. You you end up rerolling with ordnance experts to try and get those doubles, and sometimes it backfires. Whereas just extra dice seems fine. There's very few ways that can backfire. Okay, you're only gonna get it once, but like in a lot of cases, an MC30 is only getting in there, getting off one shot, and she's done. And uh, admonition is a cheaper title. If you're going with two, foresight is definitely worth it. Even still, we're at 77 points. And with a bunch of cheap activations, we're well over budget. Now, the other categories of ships that could be in MSU are deltas and nebs. Uh, I think you want, you want the neb escort figure if you're taking a Yavaris. Which is perfectly fine um, if your squad ball can do it, but it, I don't know, it's a lot of points for what you're trying to do. The support has benefited some, like auxiliary shield teams, if you're taking it, seem like three points which make that chip a lot better. A lot of people are liking Vanguard as well. Uh, I don't know. I think four points for redirect when you lose one of the brace, and the brace is one of the best things you got going. And with the extra value in evades, <laughs> redemption is too expensive. I think what the things it could do for an MSU is suddenly your tokens are bringing back shields, and your commands are bringing back cards. Salvation. Salvation is decent and all round, and with that gun line, it may be sad only. It's hard to know. Now, the Pelta. The Pelta could be that squad pusher that you want if you're going with the, if you're going with the command. It's got decent reach, and then it can go well, but intensify firepower. I think of the fleet commands intensify firepower. Tempted to try shields for maximum, but A, I always forget. Uh, B, it just, I don't know that it does enough. The investment of some points is enough. Um, so I think intensify firepower, and then you could drop a lot of your other dice fixing shenanigans. Uh, and Ahsoka. It's probably a good place for her to sit. Kind of at the center. Kind of you messing with the tokens. And then potentially a disposable capacitors throwing out that extra. Rate. And we're at 500 points and we don't even have matter. Take a look at the last possibility, which is the assault. It's cheaper if you just want the intensive firepower. And you can throw an external rack. It's actually got decent flak dice. It's not pushing any squadron for you. But it's happy to jump in the middle. Anyway, let's say Jaina's Light is the one ship that's definitely sticking around. So let's eliminate who's not an MSU command. Addis is not. Sato. Could it be, but I think you're ending up with a you're ending up with uh, too many too many points in squadrons then Gar and you need too many squadron pushers and it, the balance on Sato is very hard to do. Garm is a once ships with bigger command stacks then you're probably running around Kraken is decent. Donna is cheap. Um he just with the lack of kind of uh, 
the lack of bombers or anything like that. Agate is probably a better choice if you're just going with cheapness. Medine is too restrictive and too high cost. Riken is still... With 34 points, he's expensive, but if you want a CR90B or a Hammond to go in and sit in front of that ISD and just wait its turn to do the job, um, just think he's right now, he's potentially 34 points. It's too much. Agate is your cheap option because you just add so much survivability to one single ship. Leia is a possibility. Um, and Mon Mothma is if you're going to be getting in close. And then the greatest MSU commander is probably Akbar. Because he takes those small ships and he turns them up to seven. But the problem is he's 38 points. Well, let's start with Akbar. Let's kill Arnebi. Ah. Uh, Pelta Assault Ship still has red dose sides. So let's kill the Pelta Command for a start. Okay, we're still way over budget. Let's kill those hammerheads because they're not going to do anything with Akbar. And that leaves us four ships. And this is no longer an MSU. Be the problem there. But you could kill this and you could kill the. Seize potentially with Akbar. Or with Akbar, you just double down on the TRCs. Um, I think you want that. Potentially don't want that. So if it's an Akbar list, because we can always end up obstructed. So want an Ezra Bridger to stop that obstruction. And this is a second CR90. And put in a link turbo laser towers on that. Do double arc, because sometimes even in an Akbar list you want a double arc. That leaves us with 110 points. It's not a lot. Not a lot for to do. But and add CR ninety points. Okay, so let's say Akbar is the wrong thing for us. And we've got a Pelta assault ship. It's evade to matter. It's not going to be helped by Kraken. It's only two. Um, yeah, can mean its engineering commands are ridiculous. Um, our mom I can give it for survivability. Try Leia for us. And then this means that the concentrate fire hands are also giving another reroll on the CR90As. So therefore, I'm happy to say that the TRCs don't need to be there. Want to hit hard? You concentrate fire. So we're back. We still have only 120 points to play around. So we could add just three CR90Bs, and that's a lot of fixing. And their blue dice generally hit accurately. Um, decent at killing flotillas, got the intensify firepower, and because we've got a CR90 hanging around, and we need to feed tokens, do a tant of five. Uh, that's a small bit productive. So what we can do then to increase our active. Okay. Or 
to kind of give us a little bit of help with all this token shenanigans. Let's throw in. Actually, let's throw in a combat flotilla. It's extra dice. And then we can throw in a munitions resupply. That pelt it topped up. Uh, and we need some officers. So Ahsoka can pelt her assault. That means the munitions resupply can be used as a common net in a pinch. Let's see what else. So we got three naughty points. So we have six activations, all of which make attacks. And we've got our pusher. Put put Talon, hit our Talon on. Push Lando. Uh, and add swap Ahsoka to another ship and put rings on the Pelta. Yeah, add, oh yeah, we're pulling ten to five off that because it's a bit uh, it's a bit problematic with. Yeah, let's put Ahsoka on this. And let's try. The. the now, when the Pelter does a concentrate fire, it gains a token, but then it gets Leia's ability. So, with the external racks, somebody runs in. To it, um, you will be able to blow them out. Is there else to keep? So, thing that referring to me is chart officers. Now you're going, James is two points, and it's not as good as James. So much. Things that mess with obstacles we're looking in, vested fields, astro tactics, all of these things. So the idea here is to flip them slightly. Now we're gonna do take a quick look at objectives. Uh so that's gunnery planning powerful enough blockade run. Maybe. The thing is the pelt is very, very slow. Blockade run, it's a possibility. Got a lot of speed four ships that might just dip, dip past. Um, you get to set up the ob obstacles, um, all that. The only problem is it's very hard to dodge on your laser beams in the narrow thing, and a lot of black range and squads could really mess you up. Very hard to spread out your close range intel scan on it. Your honored your fearing meta potentially. Um, Ion Storm adds a little critical effect to all your ships effectively. Uh, get to set up all obstacles. Uh, the problem is sometimes you want to be close to those obstacles because you want to be flexible, you want to flow like water. Uh, mark for destruction. Adds dust fields. Again, if you're on it, you're scared. Otherwise, I'd avoid anything with dust fields because the CR90. Um, the CR90A A's are kind of messed up by that. Most wanted is probably the best pick. If you've got uh, five ships potentially throwing dice at one big ship, it all adds up. Um, as well as that, you can scale if they've got a hull. You can. They take most wanted. It's down your first ship. Isn't the hull? Place you start placing your stuff away. Ship. 
then they'll come the hawk be close to that. And then you pick the ship that's isolated from the hawk and you go murder it. Stay the hell away from the hawk. In the worst case scenario. Thanks, Salvo. The person who asked us so the person who asked us to take a look at Rebel MSU is Inkapo. He is going to say, yes, opening salvo is wonderful. I still think it's an absolute trap. Um, precision strike, you don't have bombers. Rift assault. Um, it could be useful. Um, but it, yeah, because of the rift, it comes down the field a little bit. And again, that whole, you want to be able to spread out. A station assault in a world of onagers, just no surprise attack. Potentially, um, it can help deal with squadron heavy lists, um, set up surrounding that, kind of in and out of the to be targeting beacon. It's okay. This one, I would say most wanted simply because of the. Um, now, um, capture the VIP, run with it, test it out, push, no, we've got to sit there, fighter ambush, no, fire lanes, strategic ambush, it's a bad idea, need him being, but command one ships, except for Delta, which is not going to be there in time, hyperspace assault, potentially, um, then the Peltas show up, forking two ships and go blam 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 uh, and hide out in kind of safety. Uh, the only danger they be there. Um, at the start of the ship phase. So the earliest you're getting your intensified fire is turn three. So, jamming back. Smith, the R9 is too much. Planetary hand cannons is actually great with this because you're just chipping in a little bit more damage. Um, and then rift ambush. Oh, yeah. And it's adding the dust field. So, I think your Astra tactics are abandoned. Infosy. Probably your best bet. Astra tactics because you've a minute. Squad ball, um, so you just want the opponents, uh, things you know, even if you're moving, even if you land on exogards to kind of save your CR 90s, take that chart off. Um, uh, abandoned mine facilities, brand a and cares dot as dust field. But I'm going to say a tactic this one. So dangerous territories. We could take dangerous territories and remove our dolphin. Um, because with I had an asteroid tactic, probably they would probably be uh, get enough. Doom station is fine. It's with the Pelta. Score the that's a possibility with um we've just that and we're back um but yeah so doom station is fine it can move with the pelta hyperspace migration is good because we can we have enough ships to farm some points infested fields will help us with our minimum squad ball intel sweep is okay you'll probably get the 75 points easy enough minefields is tricky but it's also tricky for your opponent navigational hazards i've seen somebody use it quite well uh, but it depends on what if your opponent's fleet is maneuverable nothing you're not going to get anything out of it salvage run requires somebody to sit there which isn't great sensor net you don't have a uh, strategic solar corona however uh you fly out of the sun it's not a bad plan superior physicians is just death because you don't have enough squads 
and uh, we're looking at the wrong list when we came back. <laughs> we're looking at the wrong list, I'm sorry. Uh, superior positions is death and volatile deposits can be nice, but your ships do not appreciate any extra bit of damage being thrown. So we've settled on kind of Solar Corona. Um, so this is kind of a nice, straightforward um, list. Now, so some, this is kind of more a maneuver. You've got really your two uh, consistent hitters of the CR90As, then the CR90Bs duck in and try and do that little bit of damage, and then you've got the Pelta for, you know, it's either the bait that they go for, and you surround and you cut the stuff down into little chunks, it comes in, and then you dump external racks and a con fire and everything else. But this is all just consistent little damage. You've got your combat flotilla for handing out the gar books. And then you've got a decent squad ball that can do a good job of tying anything up. And then if they don't have squads, you can go on the offensive. So this is kind of the first attempt at an MSU. I also quickly threw together a gunline MSU, which is just four hammerheads, Task Force Organa, quad battery turrets, a Neb B with salvation, and a uh, CR90A, which is Jaina's Light, and your standard, because this is a bit slower, you've got your standard defensive X-Wing Janors, Bigs defensive suite for these guys. Uh, most wanted abandoned mining facility hyperspace migration. Now, during the technical difficulties, I realized I was touching my nose and struck my beard. This is because I'm not 100% sure how to do this, but it also probably affected sound quality halfway through the video. So I'm really sorry about that. Uh, in good news, uh, the technical hitches we had at the start may give you some idea of what we're doing next. Um, we've also reached, so there's may or may not be some collaborations on the way. Um, uh, Star Wars Armada Explained is back explaining 1.5 stuff that we'll link at the end of the video. Um, there is a lot of content from Ion Radio, uh, more podcasts, great time, apart from the forums disappearing. Uh, have I, I Have You Now is putting out quite a lot of articles at the moment, as well as Cannot Get Your Ship Out and Steel Strategy. So... Uh, take a look at them and as always uh, if you want a list reach out via discord or in the comment section or whatever um, I'll also be trying to get games in time for the world cup uh, because I still haven't picked my list because I have too many lists which is problematic because well I'm just making more lists um, but anyway uh, have a lovely time and sure see you next time